what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce Gary Gordon. I uh, printed out uh, his resume and all the things that he's done here. It goes to about 30 pages. So I figured that uh, I don't need to really tell you all the incredible things that he's done, all the associates that he's belonged to, all the medical degrees that he has, all the uh, amazing discoveries that he's made in uh, a lifetime of medicine, conventional medicine, and alternative medicine. All I need to do is just uh, tell you that I've known Gary for over 20 years and without a doubt he's probably one of the most brilliant men on the face of the earth today and one of the few doctors that understands not only conventional <coughs> medicine but alternative medicine and is truly a pioneer in searching for those things at the least expensive cost that will give people optimal health and long life. So with that, I'd like to invite Dr. Gordon to come up. It's a great pleasure to see all of you here tonight, and thank you all for coming. I'm going to try to make it worth your time and effort. We do live in a time of tremendous change, and it has become almost impossible for anyone to keep up on any given field. I stay driven to try to keep up with all the late-breaking <coughs> developments in both what we call standard medicine and alternative medicine because it's fantastic when they make a breakthrough with a new drug I have the privilege of saying what can I find in the natural world that may do what that drug is doing without having to kill people and maybe even being affordable and for example they have a new drug now Gleevec that looks very promising for certain forms of leukemia the price tag $2,400 a month and you need it for the rest of your life so I love to learn what they are doing and to take from that and say, what can I do about cancer? We will do that at another time. Tonight, we have the fun of taking care of the first leading cause of death, heart attack and stroke, which after all is still in America in spite of some limited successes and we are seeing a declining in the number of deaths per 100,000, but nonetheless, we do lose one out of two to these diseases. And you're going to get a real different spin on the story tonight when I start showing you some overheads that I have here because I'm going to make it very clear. I'm in this field because I myself was disabled with angina at age 29. So bad that I had to give up my medical practice as an only doctor in a small town doing industrial and all kinds of medicine. We, they were building a $110 million dam in, in the little town of Auburn, California. So I was, um, I was it. I was the doctor for a town of 1,200 people and they brought in 1,200 workers who worked 24 hours a day building a dam. So I, I never had any sleep. And by age 29, I had disabling angina and was unable to stand on my feet. So when I went into Mount Zion, San Francisco, I was there more than just to learn to be a radiologist. I was also hoping they might save my life. And it happened, that was 1964, because I'm 66 years of age today. And it happened in those days, they were doing an operation called a Weinberg procedure, which was later proven to be pure, unadulterated quackery. And I have had a very much of a chip on my shoulder ever since, because since I almost got duped into doing that, crazy operation. I want them to prove to me, since they're still killing people left and right with bypass surgery and leaving about 30% of people with serious losses of memory just for the pleasure of having your chest split open, I'd like them to prove to me that they're not still selling the public a bill of goods. And as you will see tonight, maybe my position is well taken and maybe all of them are wrong. Now, obviously, Heart disease is a multi-billion, billion, billion dollar thing. And so I'm going to show you first the Wall Street Journal because amazingly enough, dollars drive the system, folks. It isn't what I have to say and it's not what we publish in JAMA or New England Journal. It's dollars. And so when you see on October 7th, 1999, that inflammation of the artery is the prime sus suspect and they're saying that the body in trying to repair an artery can backfire disastrously and you can have a plaque that bursts like popcorn. Well, that's junk language. It was, they're selling the paper. But <clears throat> what that really meant is, I'm going to make sure that you get the word down, is that inflammation 
of the artery. Well, what is inflammation? It's kind of like a sore throat. You've seen an inflamed, sore, red, infected finger. So you all kind of know what inflammation is. It's going to be more complicated than that. It's not going to be that simple. But what we're going to have you understand then is that the American Heart Association says in their rule books here, we need a diet that's low in cholesterol. So we have everybody being sucked into egg beaters and we show the studies, animals fed egg beaters look like they're going to die. Within about half their lifespan, they look like they're gonna die. And then they say, make sure that you maintain an active lifestyle. Well, that is correct and a healthy weight, that's good. But that says these simple approaches are known to reduce the risk and it might be more important if they find who has an inflammatory factor. Well, fortunately, Dr. Bob Winslow stays up on this stuff and his office does a C-reactive protein test now because of what I will show you today. And so you're gonna see on this thing that all of the nonsense that we've all been told about the high blood pressure, the stop smoking, the, the sodium and all these things, all have had very little real benefit in keeping people alive because it was all the old game of too little of a story and the story is going to get a little more complicated but fortunately there's some easy answers. So the American Heart Association says that you need to know about the role of C-reactive protein. It's a big name for a laboratory test that costs about 50 bucks. It says how does inflammation relate to this? And it says that inflammation is an important part of the disease and you're going to get this shoved in your nose so many times that I'll just move on but I'm going to take a little thing. Men have a threefold risk of future heart attack when this is lower and a two-fold increase in the risk of a stroke from this little test. Now, this test, like all tests, is not perfect because after all, you could cheat and come into the doctor's office and really have taken the two days off before, have been on a good diet, not eat a ton of sugar, maybe exercise the day before you go to the doctor so you look good. So your test could actually kind of fool us and say, mm, she didn't look too bad. The problem is, what do you look like on the day you die? That's what's really important, because if we can figure that out, I believe I can keep you from having the heart attack, and I've been very lucky with what you're gonna learn about. So, the Wall Street Journal, taking that same article and dissecting it a little bit more for you. The mechanism of heart attacks in the popular view of everybody, including 99% of your doctors, is clear. They say, well, gradually this stuff builds up on the crud, is on a, like on a corroded pipe, until finally it's about 80% closed, and then a little clot gets stuck and it shuts off, and then you're dead. Okay, the, well, that's the popular view, but it's all wrong. It's wrong? Well, that's interesting. We took the ice man out of the ice in the Italian Alps, and his body was 5,000 years old. We took that ice man that was quite perfectly preserved and we put him under x-ray and guess what? You could see the arteriosclerosis all the way down into his legs and all the way up into his brain. So the disease, folks, that we call arteriosclerosis is an old disease. And yet you're gonna to learn tonight that dropping dead like flies really became popular right after the Second World War. Eisenhower, when he was president, had six heart attacks. And so it's kind of interesting to learn from his cardiologist, Dr. Paul Dudley White of Harvard Medical School, who teaching his students while he was treating Eisenhower, taught them that if they were very astute doctors, they might diagnose at least three or four cases of coronary artery disease in their lifetime. And now we find it in virtually everybody at age 21. So what's going on? It says, the truth is, that the heart attack is caused by something much smaller, which perhaps is narrowing the artery only a little bit, so small, that they don't see it on the arteriogram. And so they could send you, you could go through the painful arteriogram that's got some risk with it. I used to be in radiology. First time I injected the dye in patient, he was allergic to dye and he died. But fortunately, we were able to bring him back to life with a lot of heroics. But it, it, it makes it clear to me as a radiologist that these are not innocuous things that we do to people. And so the thing is, what comes out of here with a clean bill of health because you're told there's nothing wrong and soon afterward the patient dies of a heart attack. So with all these new discoveries, researchers are beginning to understand that there's a lot to understand about the actual story of what is going on in an artery. 
And to kind of titillate your imagination again, this is a heart, and this is that big vessel coming out of the heart called the aorta. And if this thing was as red and angry as a sore throat is, or as an acute appendix looks like when we take it out, it's ready to rupture, you'd say, my God, that guy's got a pretty infected heart. And we don't do very well operating on infections. Because that's not the problem. The body has to heal it. So you're going to learn some more stuff here because this story of infection is actually almost as simple as telling you that you all know someone who's woken up one morning and had a nasty cold sore on their lip. And it wasn't there the day before and they're embarrassed. They hate, like having pimples on your, but what are those things on pimples? Don't they occasionally break? And a boil can break? And when a boil breaks, and if it happens to be a boil and it's in the wall of your artery, when it breaks, your body thinks that you've torn a hole in your blood vessel and the body says, I know what to do. I have a tire patch just for these leaks. And the body puts the platelets to work to put a patch over where that boil in your artery broke. But because we all are under too much stress, eat the wrong foods, have the wrong oils, are heavily poisoned, your body doesn't get just the right amount of tire patch to seal that little opening where the boil on your artery broke. It is too active and it makes a bigger patch than you need and that's called a clot. And according to the textbook that I didn't bring down here tonight but it's on my website cordonresearch.com, 85% of heart attacks and strokes are a blood clot from this problem and we call that kind of plaque it's an infection plaque. We have a big word for it. We call it vulnerable plaque. Well, why is it vulnerable? Because you're vulnerable to sudden death. And when does it hit? It can hit when you're walking across the street. There's no way of predicting it. So the people in this audience, the Dr. Bob Tess, who have healthy levels of C-reactive protein could be unhealthy a week from now, and it's even worse than that. We take the blood out of your arm. It's your heart that can get sick. So on the operating table at Hopkins, they took and measured the blood in the arm, and then they took it right out of the artery that they were going to remove for the bypass surgery just before they took the artery out. And here in the heart, it was 10 times higher. So it gives you a little idea then that we're talking now about a nasty problem. And this is the profound language. Valentin Fuster, MD, PhD, Chief of Cardiology at Mount Sinai in New York City, is the immediate past president of the American Heart Association and he's the editor of a book called Vulnerable Plaque which is all over my website and it's heavily referenced in the articles that we've handed out to you here so you can find this. You can put this in the nose of your friend if you're trying to keep your friend alive who's dumb enough to believe the heart surgeon is telling him the truth. And you can put this article in my website. People can go to it. They can get information that's only my job is to give people information. If they choose to ignore it, then I at least have done my job. But what we're going to teach you is that the chief of cardiology happens to be a non-operating kind of cardiologist. He doesn't believe in carving on people. So if he doesn't believe in carving, he's what we call a medical cardiologist instead of an interventional one. These guys can be your friend. Because he says, very simple, to all of his colleagues that are surgeons, he says, treat the bloodstream, treat it. Don't attack the blood vessel like it was a pipe. He's attacking his fellow cardiologists saying, why are you carving on people's pipes? That's not the problem. You can't even see the right lesion. So this is pretty, pretty strong language. It's as strong as you can get and not get shot in a business that's worth a few hundred million, a few hundred billion dollars. Okay, let's look at it. We've all been told what our cholesterol is so important that many of us carry the figure around in our head. Unfortunately, it turns out that they are now telling us that you can't depend on your cholesterol to tell you anything. Because the bottom line is that there are certain things called oxysterols. That's a big name for oxidized fat, like rancid fat. We all know we won't feed rancid, rancid butter or rancid anything to our animals. But we oxidize inside of our system, which is why all of you, if you're doing what I will try to teach you tonight, will be every day of the rest of your life on an antioxidant. And it won't just cut down heart attacks. It's going to cut down Alzheimer's and glaucoma 
in Parkinson's and cancer. So it's going to be a benefit to know that. But those are words that your average cardiologist is not learning yet because he's so used to doing what? He sells what the drug company teaches him to sell, which is a drug. And the drugs get through the system because they're willing to spend the $500 million it takes to get a drug approved in America so they can come out and tell you it's good for you. They spend $500 million, which is why these prescriptions cost so much money. Now, I have the privilege of being able to absolutely look at their work and say, that's interesting. How can I do that with a non-drug natural product? And that's what we're going to be teaching you tonight. So what he, Dr. Kummerow, who's chairman of biochemistry at University of Illinois, and this is a very brave doctor. Dr. Kummerow is the guy that taught me. He's professor of emeritus of food chemistry at University of Illinois. He taught me that the oil that we do your french fries in at McDonald's doesn't coat the walls of the McDonald's the way the greasy spoon hamburgers that we always used to laugh when we used to go and get a hamburger and it was a greasy spoon because the oil used to coat the wall of the place you had those french fries but they realized they were wasting millions of dollars having to pour oil in all the time so they had a special oil made that has a different melting temperature after you eat it we think that it'll be there until we put you in the crematorium. In other words, it is not likely to leave your body. So there's a lot of malabsorption in our society because we are putting things in our bodies that no one has done studies on. And this very week, Popular Science had a big article showing you and admitted, this is right out of the University of Rochester, that they now can get an animal to get Parkinson's in less than two weeks by doing what? by taking a fungicide and a pesticide. Now, what does that mean? These are things that are on our tomatoes and potatoes that we eat each day. And what they never did before, no one ever tested the two in combination in order to sell your insecticide or your pesticide or your fungicide. You only have to test it alone. And EPA said, Environmental Protection said, this opens up a real can of worms. We've never tested what happens to you if you, the consumer, are getting in the same food both a fungicide and a pesticide and an insecticide. These interactions, one opens up the brain, so the other one is getting in and inducing the free radicals that are destroying your brain cells and bringing on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So it's a kind of interesting world to live in to know how risky it is if we can't actually have our own organic garden in the backyard and raise our own food. So it, it is a little sad. Fortunately, the stuff we're going to talk to you about can do an awful lot to keep you alive and healthy. What they found in this thing is that of 506 men who had had to have a bypass, only 14% had, had a cholesterol over 240. 50% had blood level cholesterol below 200. So you can see it isn't really very protective to play around with all this nonsense of spending 100 or $200 a month on some ridiculous drug to lower your cholesterol because it's not the problem. It's been a great game to sell a lot of stuff, to sell egg beaters that nobody needed, and to sell margarine that kills you because margarine is the trans fat that the body can't handle because it's been subjected to such high temperatures that it works like a left-handed monkey wrench. It fools your cells into thinking that it's a real fat that the cells might use as a coat to make up new cells, and you make up millions of new cells every day, and you're giving your body inferior building materials when you're not aware of these things. So in any event, this ongoing research from Dr. Paul Ridker, he is the doctor at Harvard who single-handedly has had the guts to stay with this and change the whole game, folks. So we're going to owe him a lot because there is so much money on the table that no one wanted to hear the story I'm telling you tonight. Because if it turns out that it's infection, you'd think, well, that's a big deal. Maybe the antibiotic companies are going to win because now we'll all live on antibiotics. The only thing is the infection, folks, doesn't go away with any in antibiotic you can buy. We can suppress it, but it doesn't go away. So it doesn't really make a lot of money for them, but we have a natural way we'll teach you about Wobenzyme, which naturally will enable you to keep the infection under control the rest of your life so that it isn't there making a nasty sore, cold sore, or boil on your arteries. So anyhow, this gentleman, who was our invited speaker to the organization called ACAM, American College of Advancement in Medicine, which a thousand doctors joined 
to do and learn chelation because when I found out about chelation and it changed my life by the eighth treatment intravenously I could run up a mountain so fast that my poor two-year-old Irish setter was going <laughs> couldn't keep up and then I walked and water skied six times around a lake that I normally was exhausted after one so I thought there was something to this chelation therapy and I formed an organization along with some of my friends and it is that organization that followed the protocol that I wrote, which has actually led to a million people now have had chelation following the exact guidelines that Dr. Winslow and all of us follow that I brought together when I wrote the protocol and put together the first book on chelation therapy, which is called The Chelation Answer. In any event, Ridker is coming then to speak to our doctors. This is right after his article had hit the press and he was pretty famous already. He comes in looking at the chelation doctors, and he's from Harvard, a cardiologist, world famous now. And he says, I've listened to you guys all morning. And he says, I thought, I was told you guys are a bunch of quacks. And he says, I'm amazed. He says, you guys are talking the kind of medicine I wish the cardiologists at Harvard would talk about. He said that right on the tape. Because he understood that we are the cutting edge, those of us who are playing the entire story of the antioxidants, the treatment of your homocysteine, treating these things that as you see as we go through here, that it is really an interesting story. And what he's shown is that aspirin has a slight reduction in heart attack, but it's only a small, non-significant change if you look at the real data. Because the bottom line, folks, is that aspirin is another cruel joke that's been sold to the public. It is far too weak. The book that Fuster published, which is on my website and quotes the page, I didn't bring the book with me, but it says, aspirin gets one of the three pathways that are involved in giving you a fatal clot. And so with only one of three pathways being, being taken care of, I'm sorry I'm tied up for a while. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. In any event, the actual article, as it appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine, is Dr. Ridker's article. I'm going to be stuck for one second. I'm sorry. Yes. 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 I've got in. The research that Dr. Ridker has done has led him has led Dr. Ridker now to be widely recognized, but this work is again only one piece of it, but it's very important to see that half of all heart attacks occur in people who have perfectly normal blood lipids. So that really changes the picture and says that we have to broaden our understanding. And he has been able to make it so that these drugs that they actually sell to lower cholesterol have a secondary benefit. He's been able to show that the drugs that are doing the best that are lowering cholesterol aren't doing the real thing. They're really dropping C-reactive protein, which is interesting. Because again, all of you now understand C-reactive protein is a marker for inflammation. Part of inflammation is the toxicity of our bodies, because we all are lead poisoned, as you're going to learn. And part of it is an infection. So infection and the toxic metabolism from poisoned bodies with tons of lead, which you'll find the average has a thousand times too much, leads to this test, the C-reactive, the high sensitive C-reactive. And when that test is elevated, no one should be being operated on because if they don't believe in anything we're teaching here tonight, they at least deserve to give the patient an antibiotic because an antibiotic alone called azithromycin is what they would give you at NIH, National Institute of Health, and they'd give you a prescription for a year knowing that they can't fully eradicate it, but at least buying you time so that nobody's splitting your chest open for surgery that you don't need. So it's very interesting. The researchers show that this is inflammatory and it's decades of irritation and injury and healing and re-injury and the body's defense mechanism is actually what turns around and they call it betrayal but that's an oversimplification we are as a population hypercoagulable we have a very fancy blood test now that we do in Phoenix it's called the Hemex H-E-M-E-X laboratory for hematology experts this blood test 
virtually all of us will fail, even if we're living on aspirin and or Coumadin or even heparin. The reason that we found is because these infections that you're going to learn these big words tonight, HHV6, mycoplasma, chlamydia, you don't need to learn all the names of them, but they are things that we now know have been in our bodies since the beginning. In other words, this is nothing new, folks. There's always been perhaps a hundred times more actual living bacteria in our intestinal tract than there are cells that make up our body. And so we have tremendous numbers of living bacteria on our skin. We have a relationship with bacteria. They've been there all along. The book called Plague Times by Paul Ewald, who's professor of medicine at Amherst, is in every bookstore and explains all of this because, folks, it turns out that that same infections are involved in all Parkinson's, in all Alzheimer's, and it's these kinds of infections that are involved in many of the can cancers, like cervical cancer with human papillomavirus. So it's fascinating to learn that if you think about it, if there's always been us around and microbes, Everybody knows that microbes turn over pretty fast. That's why we're now facing this new age of antibiotic resistant infections. And you're hearing more and more today, one out of four infections in a child's throat will not respond to any antibiotic but the most powerful one, vancomycin. That's today already. In other words, it's just on a straight slope going up like this. Soon, none of the antibiotics will work. Only Bob Winslow will be keeping you alive because he has at his office the ability to give you hydrogen peroxide and he's going to be looking into other things that we call oxidative therapies like ozone, ultraviolet blood irradiation and other things that allow your body to have the burst of energy it takes to destroy these infections. But the infections have gotten the upper hand because all of us have been poisoned enough that between the stress and the lead and the mercury and the PCBs and the dioxins and all these wonderful insecticides that you hear about in the paper every day, our immune system is just not up to keeping the infection at bay. Just like if the cat is away, the mice will play. If your immune system isn't going around checking every single thing, the bugs say, I haven't seen a white cell here for six hours. Let's, let's have a few babies. And so the bugs are having and reproducing. But we have tricks. One of the best ones is iron chelation, which I will show you for a second, a book which is called The Iron Time Bomb. It's an incredible story. After you read this, you will never let anybody take a vitamin mineral that contains iron unless they're either pregnant or having regular menstrual periods or have a blood test to prove they need iron because it turns out the iron is what these microbes or infections love the best to let them grow really good. So if you don't like to help your enemy grow, <laughs> we won't give him iron. That's why women have been outliving men seven to eight years all these times because women were smart enough to keep getting rid of iron for the first 45 years. It's a pretty good trick. And so now we're looking at the picture with totally different eyes, but the Wobenzyme has the ability because there's rutin. It's a very misconstrued, the word Wobenzyme confuses people because it sounds so Germanic, Wobenzyme. Yeah, it is made in Germany, but the doctor who started the entire plant called Mucos in Germany, Dr. Ransberger was just a medical student at Columbia University Medical School. And he learned from the first department of enzymology that was headed by Dr. Max Wolf, who treated the most famous people in America. He was an incredible doctor. And Dr. Benitez, that were his chiefs, when he started to study enzymes. So he honored Wolf, W-O, and Dr. Benitez, B-E, and he put it in the name of it. And everybody says, Wolfenzyme, and they think they're talking German, German or something. In any event, it's very interesting. The, uh, the cholesterol-lowering drugs, have definitely helped people, but not for the reason the doctor is giving it. Isn't that a strange story? The doctor thought he's helping you by lowering your cholesterol, and I've just shown you half of all people have heart attacks with normal cholesterol, so how important is it to lower, lower cholesterol? We're beginning to think. It's just like in a recent study in London, they checked everybody coming in the hospital and asked, you know, having, everybody had a heart attack that was coming in this department, and they said, are you on aspirin? Yes, 56% were taking aspirin. So it, was, it looked like it was a little dumber to be on the aspirin than to not be on it. And when I teach you that not only does aspirin kill 3,000 people a year, which that's a small price to pay for a wonderful drug, 3,000 a year, but the thing is, uh, you know, 
what we have is people do bleed to death with it all the time and they don't understand it. And then 27,000 die every year because they're taking the so-called ibuprofen and the other non-steroidal to get rid of their arthritis. 27,000 a year die. But that's not, even that's not the problem. It's the 110,000 that almost die that you and I are paying when they go to the hospital for them to save the life with the ruptured uh, bleeding ulcers in their gastrointestinal tract from those wonderful drugs. So we will tell you tonight that we have a real love affair. Obviously, for what I'm teaching you here, I'm really pe preaching that we all need anti-inflammatory. Tonight, we're gonna teach you the aspirin alternative so that you know a way to get the benefit with Wobenzyme without the risk. So, when I gave a talk, right after Dr. Ritker's paper had come in the front page of the New York, uh, of, of the Wall Street Journal, I was teaching the doctors doing chelation at the meeting in October 1999. I said, you must learn how and what this Wall Street article means because it really means that they're gonna help us get rid of the excessive reliance on bypass and angioplasty because they're gonna now finally tell the public at a big important level when you talk to industry that runs the country and tell them, hey folks, you need to learn about inflammation. This is gonna help us eventually stamp out the needless bypass surgery. And how is this gonna help you? It's gonna teach you that everybody is going to need something to deal with these infections and in discussing what to do with your patients, I tell them that everybody has been told that they no longer have to have heart surgery by the president of the American Heart Association. He's saying, learn how to treat the bloodstream. But Dr. Fuster is a good MD. He wants to do that with a drug. And he's working as a consultant with some of the biggest drug companies. And Pfizer and their business plan, if you go on the web and read, read Pfizer's business plan, they expect to sell in the next, starting four years from now, about six billion a year of a drug to do what I'll be teaching you tonight that you can do naturally. And so they expect, so the big boys all understand where I'm taking you. They say, hey, if we can stop the public from having clots, they'll pay whatever the cost is. But the problem is in order to get it through the $500 million, you have to have something you can patent. And if you can patent it, it's by definition unnatural, synthetic. And if it's unnatural and synthetic, what's the likelihood that some of us aren't gonna handle it very well? We'll be the ones that die. And so that's the problem they're having right now. All the new drugs in New England Journal last week specialized in the whole article was all the new drugs to thin the blood. And most of the articles say doesn't seem to be much better than aspirin. <laughs> and aspirin, I just told you, is getting only one of the three pathways that causes the clot to form. So, <coughs> so two-thirds of the clots are forming like you weren't on aspirin. And I don't mind, I mean, 3,000 deaths sounds horrible, but if it really kept people alive, it'd be different. The problem is aspirin is a cyclooxygenase inhibitor, which means it prevents your body from taking the good oil. Where do you get good oil? If you eat salmon twice a week, you have 40% less heart attacks. I put the expensive, the most powerful salmon oil I can find, and I put it in a package and I give it to everybody. I call that part of oral chelation because that's how much oils are important to us. Not the wrong oils, not the margarine, not the stuff they're trying to lie to you about, but the right oils. But the right oil still has to be used by my body to make something like WD-40 so that my arteries will be as slippery as if I could, could have sprayed them, meaning my heart doesn't have to work to get the blood all the way down to my leg, because if I can keep my arteries slippery, and that's called prostacyclin, which is your body's own natural WD-40, but it can't make it with aspirin in your body, which is why they tell you, don't take very much aspirin. They say take just a little like a baby aspirin because they know less people will die and it'll do less harm. So that's the, uh, the, the two-edged sword that we always have with these drugs. So we're now teaching you then that there's ways, we call what I do molecular-based cardiology. That's the future of medicine and I'll show you. Dr. Bob is doing these kind of tests, but the thing is what we're teaching you is that by the time you know your homocysteine, your C-reactive protein, your LP small and some of these other things, fibrinogen, you then don't need their ridiculous, silly arteriograms because I, having been in radiology, can tell you that that test, when we fill your artery with dye, which I said, you know, we kill a few people with it, with the study, but the problem is the study isn't telling you the truth. The study 
looks like you're 95% blocked right there at the top of your heart and they tell you you're a heart attack waiting to happen. Well, wait a minute. When I was in radiology, I took a patient and I did a study on his leg. And on the arteriogram, the artery stopped right at the knee. So you'd say, my God, his foot must be falling off. He was a hod carrier. He was moving concrete around in a wheelbarrow all day and never even had a leg cramp. How could he have such a warm foot, no pain, no cramps, and the artery closed off? Well, when the artery closed off, the body had made tiny collateral circulation. And collateral is so small, you can't see it on the x-ray. So x-rays lie, leading doctors to lie. That was the headlines yesterday in the newspaper, that they were training the doctors how to lie so they could uh, try to bill the insurance company for more money. It's a shame that the game has turned into such a bad game for everybody. So in any event, you're now learning a lot about inflammation, and now you know from me that since they cannot see the vulnerable plaque because it's in the wall of the artery, they've been looking for what blocks the artery that they can see when they put the dye in the artery. The problem is in the wall of the artery, and you can't see that in the arteria. So that leads them to scare people into surgery on the wrong plaque. Make you feel really bad to have your loved ones dead from a surgery they not only didn't need, but was actually doing nothing to change the outcome. Because if they would, if they would armorize your loved ones from death for just a few years, I wouldn't be so hostile toward them. But every study that you read shows that in virtually no case has surgery keeping patients along, alive longer than the old, lousy medical treatment in people like Dr. Bob Winslow, who know the new, natural, advanced things to which IV chelation is a wonderful piece of a puzzle, which I'll explain to you later. IV chelation in our group, which is just a thousand members, treated a million people, about 85 to 90% of those people say it was money well spent. We didn't help everybody because we didn't know all this. There was more to learn. But it's interesting because the little group of a thousand doctors, one of them, Dr. John Barron from Cleveland, was my father's classmate. He's now 92 years of age. His hair is the same color. His skin looks no different than mine. He has a huge practice. He added 5,000 feet to his practice last year to take care of his huge practice in Cleveland. And the other one, Dr. Bacay, is 93. And he is an ophthalmologist who sees eyes from the morning from 6 till noon and then does chelation every afternoon from 1 to 6. And he's in Little Rock. So you can imagine that there's not another medical group around that has practicing members that are 92 and 93 years of age. Dr. Bacay was with me in Istanbul last year for a conference we go to. He flies to every meeting. Both these guys are at every meeting. He can't keep them away. And so you can see it's really dangerous because they obviously are suffering a bad thing. They've had too much IV chelation. One's had over 1,500 and the other's had over 3,000. So that's a bad thing. Because if we started doing that, Social Security would never balance out. <laughs> so we'd have some real problems. The politicians could really deal with that one. So as I said, Dr. Bob is doing these kind of tests. And if you have friends that can't do all of them, if they just get the fibrinogen done, if they get the C-reactive, if they get the homocysteine, this is the stickiness. This is how sticky your blood is. This is a $100 test that's kind of leading into the $1,000 test that I do whenever I get a phone call from a really tough case that's tried, tried 30, 40 chelation and there's still no, the feet are ice cold and there's no circulation going or the brain's not working or something. Then I do the $1,000 test because then I can look good because I can say it. We can change your blood thickness. Because if you had weight 80 motor oil in your car instead of weight 10, on a cold day it might have trouble starting. That's what people have when they have thick blood. And thick blood is what I'm specializing in teaching you tonight because that's the easiest way to think about it. If you can't get rid of the lumps and bumps because they've been on our arteries for 5,000 years, let's learn how to ignore them and make the system work anyhow. Yes, it's possible to get rid of all our arteriosclerosis, but it's not easy. Because part of it is aging, which of course my feeling is that if you were lucky enough to be on 3,000 chelations, obviously you age a lot slower. You would, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be practicing at age 92. But the thing is, that's why I came up with the oral, which will never be as strong as the IV treatment. But the oral, even though it's only 5% absorbed if you're healthy, if you're unhealthy, it may be 18% absorbed, but it's in your body every day. And guess what? 
EDTA, which stands for acetic acid, which is vinegar. And when I say ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, what I'm saying is I have put four molecules of vinegar together, vinegar. So now you know what EDTA is. Four molecules of vinegar. Now everybody knows you put an eggshell into vinegar and it'll start to dissolve. You leave it in there long enough, the eggshell gets completely digested because the calcium will react. And that's what the EDTA is doing. And since the average main blood vessel in the heart of an 80-year-old is 140 times more calcified than you were at age 10, you can see there's a method to my madness for anti-aging. I just chelate people so that artery stays a little like a new garden hose instead of an old inflexible garden hose that's ready to break the minute you bend it. And so we have some old people, we look at them, their bones are so weak it looks like the aorta is what's keeping them standing. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting to understand this. And so the picture that we've got is that you're now learning that you can be without a cold sore today, get dehydrated, get too stressed out, and you'll have your cold sore tomorrow. So I tell everybody that if I can keep you on something that won't kill you, that will agree with your body, and that will move you in the direction of having less of this tendency to be weight 80, keep you more like weight 10, so that if you do have an infection in your artery and it happens to break, the artery doesn't make that big clot and it goes to your head or your heart and kill you. So I teach people that that's part of it and then I teach things that there's a lot of stuff about immune enhancing and we'll be doing sometime in the next three months or so we'll be back down here again and teach you other implications of what we're telling you about now because it goes right into anti-aging. But in this new information, the paradigm of the science of cardiology, we now know that if we add what I'm teaching you tonight, how to control inflammation, to what other people have been using, which is meditation, exercise, which is vital if you're going to have your maximum intended useful lifespan, getting off things that you're allergic to. You know, it turns out that if you are a blood type A in America, you tend to die about 25 years younger than blood type O. So you'd say, my God, being a blood type A must be really bad news. Well, I go to Japan and I lecture over there on alternative cancer therapy all the time in their predominant blood type. And Japan is blood type A. And they're one of the longest lived nations on the face of the earth. What do they know that the Americans don't know? They know enough to have their real estate so expensive that nobody can afford to run cattle or have wheat fields. <laughs> <laughs> and, so <the> net, <laughs> and so it turns out that those are a couple of no-nos if you happen to be a blood type A. In fact, probably for most of us, dairy products are wrong. In fact, what I'm beginning to preach, because what I'm showing you tonight is the easy story. I have an exact duplicate of the tests and the treatment that has kept 15,000 patients in Japan. 15 years, not one has died because we can take these same tests, only a little more sophisticated, now leaning toward cancer in the immune system. And if I show you that your tests are not in the right range and you choose to think it's important enough to find a way to get your tests in the safe range, even if you have to buy supplements every day the rest of your life, you do not wind up having the lump or bump of cancer. So this is just a very, very nice parallel. I happen to have been the expert in this country on using some of this, and I've been working with Dr. Kobayashi in Tokyo, who did that study, and it's all using nothing but holistic medical practices, natural, dietary, herbal, and nutritional supplements, and nobody's dying of cancer. So that's kind of a fun story to learn, because that'll take you right into anti-aging. In any event, you're going to see a lot of stuff done because, as I said, there's billions of dollars in Pfizer's business plan. They're going to sell you all kinds of drugs. But the good news is, at least, they're going, to, they're going to be selling you so many drugs, they won't be able to push the heart surgery as much, will they? So the good news is that they'll be killing their share with their drugs, of course, but in any event, uh, Dr. Fuster is working, and there's a, this moment, there's actually $2 billion worth of research going on to try to find a safe thing to do what I'll teach you to do tonight with nutritional supplements. But that'll be covered by people's insurance and everybody loves it when it's covered by their insurance even if it kills them. You know, I mean, gee whiz, you know, at least it's covered by my insurance. <laughs> so the thing is, uh, this shows you that in these drugs that are out there, if they compare the one, uh, which is the drug, 
to the placebo, <clears throat> they still had a lot of bad things happening. And 6.6% .6 of patients on the stupid drugs they're going to want to sell you, Eptifib died, and 10.5% in the placebo. So they say that's a huge, see how they make that into a big deal from 10.5 to 6, that's only, that's only 3.7% more people getting out of there without a complication, but they make it sound like it's a 37% reduction. It really is an impressive number. It's nothing. I specialize. I tell people, very simple, if they only are on the beyond chelation that I designed many years ago, we're talking about a 90% reduction in heart attacks. And if I add to that the Wobenzyme, then it's about 98%. In other words, I virtually send no one to any surgery, and I don't lose people. So what am I doing? Well, I had to come up with a safe substitute for the Coumadin. I even have heart valve patients that are told by their doctor, you're, that valve is beating your blood, you've got to live on the Coumadin, which is rat poison. Another name for Coumadin is rat poison. And that's what it really is. Um, so I teach people that Beyond Chelation is a product that's been used for over 15 years, and by adding Wobenzyme, which was used for 35 years in Germany, these two work together better than anything I've been able to find, and using the $1,000 blood test, I can prove to people that they're being lied to, because they're being told that the aspirin, oh, you've got to stay on your aspirin, you got to stay, well, I just do their blood test. And the blood test comes back absolutely as though nothing was going on because these drugs only hit one part of a complicated pathway that I measure 35 different tests. So if they're knocking one out and the other 34 are still very out of kilter, you're still dying is the point. So I give you a little vitamin E, a little ginkgo, a little salmon oil, a little EDTA, a little garlic, and I just hit all of the 35 different things. So it's a whole different program. So in any event, that tells you, the, the nice thing about the things that we use is that they have killed nobody. So that's always handy to have a therapy that doesn't kill people. Um, the inflammation, heart disease link, even diabetics are also at risk. And this is just your first time that this is to actually see Wobenzyme, which Dr. Bob will be offering his patients now. And this is to have you understand that the link is now fully understood. We now know that there's infections like herpes. What number of people today have herpes when we do the blood test? Herpes, we have big names for it. Cytomegalic virus, HHV6, these are all part of the herpes family. And so that's a minimum of 80% of people test positive. If I take the artery out of your body when they do your bypass operation, I can grow out of 89% of those arteries, the chlamydia. And so you can start to get the feeling, if I do your blood test with a very fancy PCR test costing thousands of dollars, I can get into HH6 and mycoplasma, and all of us have some of these bugs. So you don't have to remember the name of all the bugs, but you'll be reading them in the paper, because they'll keep on being a breakthrough when somebody has a drug. You'll be hearing about these, and you'll say, ah, Dr. Gordon told us about that five years ago. So Wobenzyme has been medically proven to down-regulate C-reactive protein, the most accurate marker. And the C-reactive protein was written up in the Journal of the American Medical Association three weeks ago as being the single most important test to know whether you're going to live or not with a heart attack. So it's nice that they are now putting the emphasis behind it so that we can broadly talk about it. Because even six months ago, the chief of cardiology at the medical school in Arizona was not doing C-reactive tests on any patient. He said, I want to, Dr. Gordon, but he says, I can't get the HMOs to approve it. $50, the best test, your life's on the line, we can't get it approved. So now you know who's been, that's why all this fight you're hearing about is can we sue these HMOs or not? They're deciding who lives and who dies. So anyhow, this Wobenzyme was examined for its ability to lower this, and we did a study, you know, a lot of times the patients have a little valve defect, they're told every time they see the dentist to get their teeth cleaned, they have to go on an antibiotic. We did the study, and we do far better with Wobenzyme than we do with the antibiotic. So we can now actually use Wobenzyme as a part of the treatment for every infection for a complicated reason. The infections have been with us for so many hundreds and thousands of years that we have reached an understanding with the infections. The infections, and, and we agreed that, you know, if you just kill me, I can't help you spread yourself all across the continent, so keep me alive. So the infection said, I'll do that. And so what, how did we do? We put a wall between the infection and us, just a very thin wall. It's a fibrin coat. Technically, it's called soluble fibrin monomer. 
If you read the literature, there'll be a thousand papers that have been published this year on this story. So yeah, it's a nice story because it allows me to treat people that right now are in hospitals not staying alive because the antibiotic isn't working and the fever's 105 and they're still dying. We sneak into the hospital. We have a private prayer healing ceremony at the bedside and we give them things like Wobenzyme and other things that you'll learn about. We just have that as part of our healing ceremony. So this is the story that's going on. So the things that you need to know is that if you were a German citizen, Wobenzyme would be paid for for you and the government would pay for it and they write a check out to the owner of about $70 million each year to pay for that which you as a German citizen would get and why would they pay for it? Well, Rheumatoid or osteoarthritis has been shown better than any existing treatment by studies and they have $50 million worth of studies and we're going to give uh, some of these books uh, are covering some of the research on the Wobenzyme but you couldn't possibly put $50 million worth of studies in any, you couldn't get it in this room. So you'll be learning a little. It's been shown to work better on herpes than the drug acyclovir and it has been shown to be better on hepatitis C than the drug interferon. It's been shown to deal with the fibrinogen and the platelet aggregability better than any of the known drugs. They use it in sports medicine. Now, the, they sell a million tablets at a time to the Olympic teams of Russia and now Austria and Germany, but it was the Russians used it as a secret weapon. They were buying it from the Mucos Company of Germany and smuggling it under the Iron Curtain into Russia, and the owner of the Mucos Company thought, gee, they must have a lot of arthritis in the Politburo. Well, we never... We never dreamed that they were using it against us in the Olympic teams because there's nothing illegal about being on it. And when you're on this, because it catches the iron, before you turn black and blue, you could be on the high jump, hit the ground with a wipeout, and be up the next day as though nothing had happened to you. And so now we're smart enough to use it in all the lucky sports people. So if you have an auto accident in Germany, you pull into the emergency room, they'll give you 50 tablets right then and there because that way the next day you don't start that whole thing of the bad neck and all the other injuries. So we use it in trauma, we use it in diabetes. We've been able to prevent the development of type 1 diabetes in children by keeping them on this. This goes into very sophisticated medicine and again, we don't want to belabor the point. The books are listed. The company that I, I consult with, Longevity Plus, is the distributor for the health professionals of America that want to learn about Wobenzyme because nobody in America knows anything about it because the owner of the company was my house guest some four years ago. And I, like all busy doctors, never used his Wobenzyme for anything but cancer because I'd learned about the fact that it would keep the average cancer patient living 30% longer. And that's all I knew. And you know, that's, you only got room for so much in your brain. And so you say, okay, somebody has cancer, I may use that. I never thought that it would keep me alive or get rid of my arthritis or make my knee joint. Well, never crossed my mind until I happened to have the owner over to lunch of the company, Dr. Ransberg. This was fun because I'm now dealing with a lady that's had four recurrent miscarriages in Australia. So I practice long distance medicine. I have air freighted overnight her Wobenzyme for her because we prevent, it turns out that any tissue in your body that's not being well fed could be a tissue that is being starved because there's a little infection in the tissue and the infection is making you elaborate this fibrin coat and where the fibrin coat is no nutrient or drug or medicine is getting into that fibromyalgia or that uterus and no toxin is getting out. So it's an amazingly simple story. So it's anti-inflammatory, prevents thrombus, useful. It even prevents the development of most varicose veins. It's useful in every autoimmune disease we use it. We have uh, FDA approval in this country as an, an orphan drug for the treatment of multiple myeloma. Dr. Ransberger thought that when he came to this country, because he is a drug in Germany, have all the references. It has been studied in virtually every kind of cancer. I was, j just the, the book on cancer alone, there's virtually not a cancer that it hasn't been studied in. All of this is at the molecular level, because this, folks, is not designed to digest your food for you. We all need help digesting food, and there's nothing wrong with taking enzymes that are di designed to digest the food, because we're not getting the use out of our food for many reasons that we should, and we're not getting as much use out of our supplements as we could, because a lot of us are eating foods we're still sensitive to, like the wheat and the dairy products and things. And so, but this was specifically designed to get intact past the stomach so that it could get into the bloodstream and do these rather remarkable things in the bloodstream. 
And so the enzyme then, it's the workhorse of every living cell. Enzymes are proteins. It just gives you little things. Enzymes are found in every biological system. They're produced in every cell. They're necessary for the chemical reaction in every single part of your body. And so you uh, now have been sensitized to one part of a very complicated story. But when you get down to the exciting story, the people in our country who are being given these stupid Vioxx and Celebrex, and those are all the wonderful new aspirins that at least only kill half as many as the old aspirin. Really, that's, and that, so it's a big improvement, but that's $100 a month for Vioxx and Celebrex. But the thing is, those are not doing anything to protect your joint from being shot, so you will be a candidate for the hip surgery and the knee replacement, whereas if you're on Wobenzyme, we get at the cause. So we do no harm. So you don't have to feel guilty when all your pain and your bursitis and all the achy joints goes away because you actually are working with your body to get at the underlying cause of the arthritis and the inflammation. And the side effect is, of course, uh, that if you did have a cancer in your body, which according to our studies in Japan, all of us have cancer virtually every day of our life once we're 20 years of age. Anyhow, we're going to turn the subject now to heavy metal detoxification because that's actually the one thing we can prove that chelation therapy does. We can prove that it takes toxic metals out of us. Right now the government is about to issue a $30 million grant to study EDTA chelation therapy. Their intention, of course, is to protect their friends and to be sure that they prove that chelation therapy doesn't work. And that's easy to do because chelation is not perfect. I have been at the autopsy table. And I can tell you that people have had as many as 200 treatments can still have lots of arteriosclerosis. When I started the ACAM organization and started training doctors around the world on chelation, I said the one thing I can prove that I'm doing is I'm increasing blood flow so your feet are 10 degrees warmer, your vision is better, your memory is sharper, you've got more energy. I never claimed that I could prove that it was reversing arteriosclerosis and they certainly aren't doing that with any of their drugs. And so what we did find out is it's something pretty obvious. If I simply get what my mother always told me, she says, get the lead out of your behind, you know? You ever have your mother say, get the lead out of your behind? Well, if you take the lead out of anything, it functions much more efficiently. And that's why on the eighth treatment, I had all that energy. So now we're touching on sacred, hallowed ground. We're now attacking the dentist and the silver fillings in your mouth. The Aaron Brockovich movie, the attorney that that movie is about has decided to take up the, the, the attack on the dentist and to try to represent the people who have been harmed by every filling put in everybody's mouth. So that's just to let you know that there isn't a single disease. We're now to the point that we're signing mercury in all, the thiomersal as the preservative in all the vaccines given to the children. Children are getting 30 times the safe level of mercury by f taking the recommended vaccinations that they're told they have to have. So we are now looking at natural ways of dealing with that, and we have things that definitely work orally. You don't have to be on IVs to take out metals, but the thing is, in a sense, I can do a lot with oral on every possible level. But just like if you have a car, you dust it off, that's one thing. But if every once in a while you really do a polish, and you take it down and get all the dead scum and everything off your car, the car looks like a new car, IV chelation is getting into a level of stuff that we can't. So I tell people, yes, I can keep you alive with oral chelation, and I expect to not have you ever call from an emergency room that you're down there with a heart attack or stroke. <coughs> On the other hand, if you've got to beat your neighbor at tennis, please go and take the IVs because it gives you the edge. The intravenous is doing things that I can't do with oral, and particularly in the area of life extension, because as I point out to you, if this main blood vessel is starting to look like a bone at age 80, it'd be a nice trick to be doing some nice IV chelation once or twice a month. But the mercury story is one which we definitely can handle with oral chelating agents. And Dr. Bob knows all about that and there's many ways to monitor it to be sure that you're staying with it long enough to get rid of it. But it's important to know that we have two different levels of poisoning. How do we diagnose and treat heavy metal toxicity when we have all these smokestacks belching? Where do you think a lot of mercury comes from? Well, folks, we burn so much coal in this world, America alone, to give us our power and our electricity.
that we're releasing 86,000 tons of mercury into the air each year. So that's why there isn't a fish in an ocean anywhere that you can eat that doesn't have mercury. But I just told you to eat the fish to keep your arteries slippery. You said, wait a minute, Dr. Gordon, you're talking out two sides of your mouth. You said, eat the fish, then you tell me the fish is poisoning me. Well, yeah, don't worry about the poisoning. We'll put you on oral chelation. Garlic alone will take out the mercury. <coughs> Selenium will tie up the mercury. DL methionine, I have thought it through. There's good and bad in everything you do. Coming to this meeting tonight, you could have had an accident. There's a benefit and a risk everything you do. <laughs> so anyhow, the, so that when we teach people about heavy metals, there's the heavy metals that I'll teach, I'll probably be going on a national television thing to teach people to do the simple things that I'm teaching you now because you don't have to go to see a doctor to get started on what we're going to talk about tonight and it will cause the average child to be getting rid of five to ten times more lead in the urine each day. So that's desirable. But if you have a child that absolutely is autistic, we now know that the autistic child is so hypercoagulable the speech center is not getting perfused with enough blood to allow them to be able to articulate anything. And part of it is the child is the, the sick brain cells have been tagged with mercury, much of it from those vaccinations. You heard often how the vaccination is causing the autism. But then when it tags those cells with enough mercury, the body sees that as not being the child's brain and the body's attacking it. So you have autoantibody. So it's a little complicated. We won't get into all that tonight. But it's fun to know that the simple thing we're teaching you tonight is that we all have to do something about detoxification. EDTA has its usefulness. DMPS has its usefulness. DMSA and garlic is an oral chelator and selenium tie, so that there's all of these things that we can do for people and we just want to get the story out then that we have so many toxic metals today if you actually had a chance to read the article I've given you which was published by my organization ACAM a month ago in their current issue and it has 176 references and I have spent my lifetime knowing what's in that article. I have every article ever written on EDTN because I had a laboratory in Japan as well as in Europe and America specializing in measuring mercury and lead and zinc. That's kind of my area of expertise. And so I can state unequivocally that there isn't a person in this room that doesn't have an average of a thousand times more lead in you than you would have had just 400 years ago living on the same now beautiful but poisoned planet Earth that we all get to share. And so I've devoted my life to trying to make simple answers that you can do every year to yourself and your loved ones to get rid of the hyperactivity and to help people able to learn. This is the lawsuit that's being filed against the lead industry. This happens to be the law firm that took the tobacco people and, and bust, busted their backs. So they have a couple billion in the bank. So they're willing to take this one for half the usual contingency fee. And so <coughs> they because they only made billions on the tobacco one. But there's not that many billions around because you can only get the money out of the paint companies. Uh, they just agreed in my city of Sacramento that 7% of the children are lead poisoned. They just had a half hour special two weeks ago. Right before the 60 minutes that comes on at night, they had a half hour special about the lead poisoning in the California schools and they showed the peeling lead paint and the, and the tables the children eat off of and it was pretty frightening. There's lead everywhere, folks. So anyhow, this is what it does to your brain and this is easy to find. You can go to EPA, you can just type in lead on any internet you don't have to look at what I say about it, but it's clear that it's dangerous to children and it changes their brain chemistry, it changes the, their attention span and intelligence, hyperactive. So of course, let's give them another drug to take care of it. I mean, now that we poisoned them with lead, they certainly must have a Ritalin deficiency, obviously. So it's sad. So the thing is, so the lawsuit will go on. And this is even, amazingly enough, you're going to learn that brass keys, the mother often says to the baby, here, put these in your mouth because the baby stops being fussy. So she's giving the child lead in the mouth because most of the brass key is not brass. So detoxification is what we're teaching people. Many of us someday will have to have our far infrared saunas at home. And we're going to have to uh, learn that this is what I teach people, the beyond chelation, is the major thing that I give everybody. We have it in a Chevy thing called Beyond Vitamins, and this is the Cadillac. But some people are in so much trouble, I have to give them garlic plus in addition to it. And when I'm really actively detoxifying, I put something in the intestinal tract to hold on to all of that mercury so that it gets washed out of the body. And this is the story then 
oral EDTA, since I was the one that started the IV chelation movement, when a doctor came to speak that I had speak at our academy, Dr. Lester Morrison, who'd spent $10 million trying to find an oral way to do what heparin does that would replace what all, I mean, so he was only 20 years ahead of the curve. Everybody now wants to spend billions. He found it, and we have it in the products that we're going to show you, but Lester showed me that in 1961, they had published a very important article in Nature, and that Pfizer had the patent on it, and it showed that if you gave EDTA by mouth, that things that look to the body like heparin, which we get from red algae, would work in your body like a heparin and prevent the clot. So that's the whole secret, folks. The exciting story was this. One of the leading chelation doctors in Switzerland, a close friend of mine, he's only about 80-something years of age, um, Dr. Bloomer was taught by his professor that you really needed to pay a lot of attention to your practice because you're going to learn something important. And what he learned is that if he gave people calcium EDTA, what would happen and calcium EDTA isn't like the ones we do in our country because the one, one we do in our country, I'm dealing, trying to help get rid of some of the calcium on your artery. But he took just the one that has already got calcium to it so it wouldn't make your artery younger. All his treatment would do is take the lead out of you. But it was convenient because he could give it very rapidly because it didn't hurt. So he gave up a benefit, which is to get rid of calcium on your arteries, for the, for the benefit of not having to be in the doctor's office so long. But what did we learn? Because Switzerland has keep such careful statistics. We learned that he had a 91% reduction in cancer in the 18-year follow-up on the people he gave this simple D-letting therapy to. So I make a very simple point. I can take lead out of everybody in this country with something that costs not much more than vitamin C, and it's oral EDTA, and we're adding it to everything that I do. So that it is not that you're paying tons of money for it. It's a very simple trick, and I'm doing it based on the known fact that what my mother always told me, get the lead out, seems to make a lot more sense than we thought. So you're learning about detoxification. And when you are eating foods that you're allergic to, you have a leaky bowel, and poisons are going into your liver, and your liver is not handling all the other metabolism steps. And a lot of these toxins are winding up directly in the brain, which is why these kids can't learn. And so there's an incredible story here. What we have to do is get your diet cleaned up, get the right kind of fibers. There's a lot of things we'll talk about at another time. But what we want to get the picture across is that we have poisoned our nest. I am not anymore trying to change that. It's gone far too far. Now I'm focusing on how to keep the few people I can talk to functioning at a high level of efficiency by teaching them what they can do. So we've given you a lot of information tonight. You've learned about testing for heart disease by finding out how thick your blood is in your fibrinogen, your C-reactant. I didn't emphasize too much, but by age 23, virtually everybody's got provable heart disease with 50% blockage of one of their blood vessels. Is the theory that this process leads slowly to your death uh, accurate? No, it has nothing to do with it. I've taught you what vulnerable plaque is all about. I've given you an idea that it's the rupture of that plaque that will be the cause of death, and, and it's because that when that plaque ruptures, the body overreacts, thinks you're going to bleed to death, and lets you wind up with that big clot, and that we can absolutely see that funny thing in the wall of the artery with about three research machines that are called ultra high speed MRI. You can't get access to any of them. They're strictly at the research level. So that's why we can be pretty sure what we're telling you is fact. And this is actually one of the pictures from those theoretical machines, magnetic resonance. In any event, the angiogram, everything can look normal. You go home and still die because they can't actually see when this... And of course, the, the little infection in your artery could be there next week and not have to be there today. The day I went to the doctor it could be next week when I get my cold sore. So we've taught you about the inflammation. We've taught you that in the inflammatory process, the C-reactin protein is a quick way of learning of your status at the given time. Because if you come in high, Dr. Bob will treat you more aggressively with things like peroxide, which help get rid of the infections and Wobenzyme. But we have to stay with it till it is down. If you happen to instead decide to go up to National Institute of Health, they'll put you on a one-year prescription for azithromycin. They know that when the prescription runs out that the bug will come back, just like Helicobacter. They can't cure them. But I have my trick, Wolvenzyme takes away the iron, so these infections cannot grow back vigorously. They're always in your body. We don't have a way to drive them out. Heart disease is the number one killer of women, and women are getting half as much attention with the same complaint at every emergency room of chest pain as men get. Beyond chelation is what I designed. 
I'm in Pace in Arizona. It has more than 60 ingredients. If anybody buys those ingredients separately, those ingredients will cost you approximately four times what it costs because we bundle them all together. And I showed you rapidly that it's all in a package of nine things that gives you the primrose, that gives you the phosphatidylserine, the ginkgo. This is the Cadillac. For your kids, they don't need that much. Give them the Chevy. It's a lot cheaper. It's only six pills instead of nine because the additional three pills are expensive things. But I have been convinced, as Dr. Dean Ornish of Sausalito, who's published his journal in JAMA, that you do not have to be operated on for heart disease. It is reversible. He had everybody on the extremely low-fat diet. Dr. Bob Atkins is my good friend. Dr. Ornish is a friend. They're obviously at opposite sides of the scale. What's the right answer for all of us? That's why I was going to start a whole new thing called Owner's Manual Research Institute. Because only by knowing your fasting insulin, your response to certain foods, which foods you're allergic to with IgG and IgE e testing and get into all kinds of stuff, can I accurately tell you what you really need. Other than that, be sensitive to what you eat. And if you don't feel good for two hours after what you ate or the next day, because you could eat your chicken today and have your heart racing tomorrow. So it's a little complicated, but we have to pay attention. It's very important what we eat. And so these are some of the studies. I had a patient come to me from Curacao who was blocked in both of his arteries so badly they said he could die at any time. So I called up my buddy who's the head of one of the big uh, surgical units at, at, down at La Jolla. And I said, you know, what's your overall outcome on these? He says, well, Dr. Gordon, he says, uh, we call a, cause a lot of mischief when we operate on those. And he says, we might stroke him out on the table. So I told the patient, you know, I'm not God. I can't guarantee he'll stay alive. But he's been alive now for many, many years. He stayed on just the IV and the oral treatment program. I had a really nice lady. She's a world famous surgeon from Vienna. She wound up with very serious advanced valve disease. They told her she'd die at any time. I said, yeah, yeah, we hear that from everybody. Uh, you know, I said, I'm not God. God, chelation isn't everything, but I at least can buy a few years. And it's only been five or six years. She finally did have to have the surgery. But six years of not having to have the surgery, she considered a really nice story. And I had another patient, age 32. He'd had three angioplasties in a, within nine months, and each one plugged up. He came down. I put him on the program. He hasn't had to have any more surgery because it's all nonsense. They're ignoring the treatment of proven risk factors. What I practice with these kind of tests that Dr. Bob and I do is called molecular cardiology. We're looking at risk factors. In the ingredient of the Beyond Chelation that I have all of my patients on now, since I met Lester Morrison in 1983 and we designed this and came out with it in 1985, it's enabled me to get rather blasé because before I had this trick, I wasn't very comfortable when patients came to me who were the big important people in town and they had 90% blockage and the university was telling them they'd die any minute until they had about 30 or 40 IVs. I didn't sleep well at night. Now with this, by the third day you're on this, I'm pretty relaxed because I don't lose anybody anymore. And the thing is, it's because the Beyond Chelation is doing all of the chelation with malic acid that's tying up the extra iron. And you're going to learn that the iron story is an important piece of my story. It doesn't make you anemic. You're not going to wash the iron out, not losing it. I'm making it so it's not available to feed your enemies. And then the red <coughs> yeast is lowering your cholesterol, but it's the interesting stuff of the red algae with the EDTA that we give everybody. Everybody is on EDTA, the same that we give at Dr. Bob's office in the IV. And if you take it twice a day, which is what I ask you to take, that way I know that you won't die during the night. And if you take it in the morning, I'm pretty sure you won't die during the day. A lot of people want to save a little money, take it once a day, and I say, just be sure that you take it at the right time. If you thought you were going to die at night, make sure you take it at night. You know. <laughs> And so, and so anyhow, the thing is that they actually do poison us with another thing I've not only lightly touched on. The worst source of, is these uh, refined cereals that we're giving our kids. They're all fortified with iron. Iron was being given to children in the neonatal units and it was, these children were dying of infections left and right. When you see the data, it is so frightening. It says right in here, liver cancer increased by three to five times among Swedish women as soon as they started in enhancing iron in all the food in Sweden. So now they've banned it, but in America hasn't figured that out yet. Don't let any of your friends take a multiple vitamin that contains iron unless they are regularly menstruating, which case is pretty good. But it would be even nicer if they get Dr. Bob to check their ferritin, total iron, and total iron binding capacity, because we like to keep men under 100 on their ferritin. 99% of us are over 100. The other cheap way is go and get blood. 
but don't tell them you're there to lower your ferritin because then they'll charge you 300 bucks. <laughs> so, don't, so you never tell them why you're there. You're there to help your fellow citizen. Now, the 20 clinical studies published have found that vitamin C absolutely helps you no matter what you're going to read. You have to remember, there is a multi-billion dollar industry out there to sell you drugs. So anytime they can get any idiot to do a little study, you know, for years they always could tell you cigarettes are perfectly safe. They always had some whore that they could hire that would tell you that cigarettes were fine. They always can find somebody to tell you, vitamin C is going to kill you. The studies on 46,000 people, are the people with the highest levels of vitamin C, had all causes of death cut by 50%. So please don't listen to their nonsense. We put in some vitamin C in this one. I come another time, we'll teach you how to use C into bigger quantities, but there's enough here to make some substantial differences. But selenium, because everybody today is loaded with lead and mercury, and when your heart is really sick and dying, you have up to 20,000 times more of some of these toxic metals in your heart muscle. So you know now why you're getting accumulation and why you're seeing some benefits. Selenium doesn't take it out, but it ties the mercury up so that it can't interfere with glutathione synthesis. Now, you never knew about glutathione. It's a big word. It's something your body makes that might be 50, 100 times stronger than vitamin E. Well, why is it interesting? Well, Dr. Perlmutter, who's a top neurologist down in Florida, belongs to ACAM, he can show you that when we inject glutathione, maybe it's 50 bucks, maybe 100 bucks, inject it in you, the Parkinson patient who's been like this, gets up and walks like this. So you may want to pay attention to things that help your glutathione, and mercury poisons your glutathione. So be aware that everybody who thinks that when they got to the kitchen you were just a little confused, the latest report last week says everybody's loss of memory really is Alzheimer. It's just the degree. It's free radical damage to neurons in your brain. The good news when I tell you next time we'll tell you that's not the end of the game. We have ways of regenerating nerve. We agreed last two weeks ago, the Journal of the AMA agreed that the heart regenerates. So believe me, we also regenerate brains, so don't give up. But just be aware that we have to do certain things to protect it. And that's the reason that the Beyond Chelation now gives you all the things I give you, because I put in there $24 a month is what it costs you to buy phosphatidylserine. It's in the product. I put the ginkgo in the product. I put everything in Because if you're not going to die of a heart attack, you're going to be living so much longer that what's the next big disease behind heart? Alzheimer's. And so Alzheimer's, Parkinson, and blindness from glaucoma are all death of neurons. And so I gave you everything in that formula that is proven to protect your nerve cells so that age 96, you can be as sharp as my friend Linus Pauling before he died. This is ginkgo. We put ginkgo in every one of these products. If I took the time now, and we're running out, so it's getting too late. Ginkgo is the oldest tree species on the face of the earth. It has a secret that nothing else has got. One of them is still absolutely living right at the epicenter of what we're um, That, folks, tells you that ginkgo has within it its own unique antioxidant ability. When the chairman down at Tulane Department of Neurobiology, Dr. Nick Bazan, called me. He says, Gary, I cannot believe this ginkgo. It, he said, if everybody was on it, we wouldn't see any Alzheimer's, no Parkinson's, and virtually no, no glaucoma. He's just an MD, PhD. He gets 12 million a year from our government. He has about 200 postdocs under him. And he says, this is the strongest he's seen. So knowing that, could I possibly put anything out for my friends that didn't have all of this in it? So you can see that this is not just prevention of heart attacks. It's dealing with the beginning of the anti-aging program. I'll hand out to people a little bit about what I actually take for anti-aging. This is more about ginkgo, and it, it's a very exciting story. It's widely available. You don't have to know me to find this thing. This is the story on the phosphatidylserine, and the bad news, doctors have confirmed that age-related mental decliner is faster and more profound than they ever previously thought. There's undeniable evidence of steep mental decline in people over age 74. Anyhow, the good news is this. We can actually, the brain can make new neurons, but I want to protect the ones you've got, and part of what we've done with what we call beyond chelation goes way beyond keeping your heart alive, because that wasn't that hard. This is the oral chelation article that I've written. I have actually reviewed in my lifetime over 7,000 articles about EDTA. I think I know everything there is to know about it. 
And this little thing is the, still the subject of a great smear campaign to suppress it because after all, a million patients that didn't get bypassed has really hurt the income of a lot of hospitals. And you heard some hospitals are in trouble. So they need your business folks. But the thing is that uh, when we teach people how EDTA works as a chelator, it is closely related to vinegar, ordinary acetic acid. It's just a weak acid. If you put an eggshell, it's going to dissolve. It's amazingly enough, it washes part of the calcium out through the kidneys. At the same time, it does a lot of interesting other actions like getting out all of these other toxic metals. So again, the basic thing that all of my patients will be on is beyond chelation, this contains the oral chelator garlic plus, but there's only three in each packet. When people come to me in trouble, besides the packet morning and night that keeps you alive, and they want to feel healthier, I aid the chelation process, even if they can't get in for the IVs, which I really prefer, but I aid it by taking another six of these, so that's pretty simple. And some people already have a multiple they love and they can only afford that, so that's cheap. That's about $24 to buy 100, and if you take six a day, you can figure out that it takes two bottles, so that's $50 a month to be chelated. And then this gets it down to the fact that if we look at what do I tell people, I said it's recommended that you be on the Beyond Vitamin is the Chevy, the Beyond Chelation is the Cadillac. The difference is those five additional expensive ingredients, and it does make a difference to what it costs you. The average adult has a thousand times more lead in their bones, and it's significantly increased lead in every tissue, including the brain, particularly the pituitary gland, as compared to anyone living before the industrial age. This has tremendous implications for chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, cancer, and every other disease. That's the big message that I'm trying to get across, is that we always, if we do provocative testing, if Dr. Bob does your IV and then sends it off to the doctor's data someplace for the measuring what comes out, always what you see after the IV is tons of bad stuff. But I strongly recommend a lifetime so you don't have to feel guilty when you enjoy a beautiful piece of salmon or other fish. That way you're getting oral detoxification every day using the twice daily packets, the six for the Chevy, the Beyond Vitamins, or nine capsules for the Beyond Chelation as a standard detoxification program. You will feel the difference and that was the fun. I've had one doctor change his entire practice within one day of being on the stuff. He said, I didn't know that you could feel different from taking a vitamin. I said, well, it's pretty simple. You've been throwing an expensive vitamin into a polluted body. If you just tie up the pollution, you'd be amazed what vitamins really can do for you. So he's changed his entire practice with that. So this is uh, obviously, technically, if you really are worried about heart, you have to add coenzyme Q. That would have made it a little too expensive. So I haven't had it and added it. So you'll have to buy that by yourself. But the Beyond Vitamin is basically this Garlic Plus, and it is a multiple vitamin, which if you read any other multiple vitamin mineral you can buy, this has boron, it has rubidium from the Great Salt Lake, it has got the grapeseed extract, it's got lipoic acid, it's got stuff you will not find in any multiple, because I didn't design it to compete at the GNC level, I designed it to keep my friends when you get to be 66, you know, your friends, you've got to keep them alive. It gets really lonely. So you've got to keep your friends alive. So anyhow, <laughs> so <laughs> the, um, this is just to let you know that they actually have to recognize that the drug that they're selling people to lower cholesterol really is working through C-reactive. And I've now taught you an affordable way of lowering C-reactive without having to take a drug since all drugs, since they're not natural, all have side effects. Don't hesitate. Dr. Bob will never let you take a drug without looking at the PDR and seeing what's, what's in it. There's always side effects. This is, for a lot of people, it is confusing. As I said, and I can't do it tonight, but Dr. Atkins is my friend, but that's not the answer for everybody. Anytime you change your diet, you're going to feel better for a while because we're all allergic as can be to the foods we eat every day. So if you change your diet in a big way, you say, wow, I found the right diet. Sure, maybe for three months. I've had people in cancer, almost near dead, go on macrobiotic and say, boy, this was the answer. And six months later, they're dying again because they never fixed and took the probiotics and the fiber and rebuilt and detoxified. And now they became deathly allergic to the soy. So they're right back to death's doorstep. So it's not simple, folks. Anyhow, this is just to let you know, Gerald Reven, Syndrome X, it's a huge story, but it tells you, he's a this is a little simplistic, he says, eat the never have margarine, but he's saying, for some of us, fat's pretty good, especially if you knew which are the good fats, but his work requires Dr. Bob to do an insulin level on you, because I am shocked at how high insulin levels have gone on our people. You've been hearing how there's an epidemic of diabetes. 
We have many reasons for it. We won't go into it tonight. The good news is basically what I'm teaching you tonight is enough. Two products, beyond chelation and Wobenzyme, is enough to give you better than 98% assurance that you and your friends aren't having heart attacks and stroke. That's a pretty good program. To go beyond that and get younger and other stuff, we'll get, come back another time. We have a few tapes here about longevity is the message. It's a talk I gave somewhere teaching people how much is on the horizon because I just came back from a meeting with all the top people from National Institute of Aging, stem cell research, gene repair. Folks, it's exciting time to be alive. Lots of good stuff. Nothing is going to work as good if we don't use the body, use it or lose it. The exercise story is incredible. Sorry we can't get into it tonight, but you've been offered, I understand, a two weeks free situation to take advantage of an exercise program. I can tell you this, you all may say it's too late. We have taken a study based on 85 year old average age, people in a nursing home with diabetes and cancer, and most of all the bad diseases from heart disease to hypertension. In two and a half months, 300% more strength and doing CAT scans through the arm and the leg at least an inch extra diameter of actual muscle. Folks, it's never too late. We do live in a time in which we can have a very long, healthy, prosperous life. This is a few of the things that I take from my own personal program. Obviously, I'm well over 12 products a day. I'd hate to tell you, I'm up to 13 or 14. In about a month, Dr. Borkin will be here to teach you a little bit about the, the hormonal implications of anti-aging. This is to let you know that if you're really worried about cholesterol, we alter that by changing the food that feeds the bugs in your intestine. So instead of having candida and bad stuff in your intestine, you have the good guys in your intestine that can keep you using your food much more efficiently for years and years this is just to let you know that Dr. Morrison had spent $10 million by the time I met him proving that the product that he's put together that we call Garlic Plus would absolutely change how likely you were to clot and that in his product you had to take two tablespoons a day and it tasted as nasty as taking Metamucil without the sugar. And with adding the EDTA to it, we were able to get it into the capsules that you are able to conveniently take every morning and evening of your life. So there's a lot of things that the activation, I've told you all about it, and I've told you salmon oil alone beats aspirin, and I've told you that's one of the extra expensive ingredients that are in the Beyond Chelation, so that we've mentioned to you that we have transfer factor, which is part of immunity. This is our special way of dealing with infections, because once you learn all the tricks, you will generally never need to use an antibiotic again. We hope to get into that and some of the anti-aging at a future time when we have a chance to come back. And this is just to let you understand again that the thing is, the lesion that we are talking about that can kill you can be as innocent as not being there today and start tomorrow. And when Paul Dudley White was the doctor taking care of Eisenhower, he said just 60 years ago that coronary artery disease was rare. It is now clear that one out of two people are dying, and here's the name of these bugs. Herpes, cytomegalic, coxsackie, chlamydia. You don't need to learn them all. You just need to know that your body had a way of dealing with them. By poisoning our earth, we've made it hard for our body to deal with them. I'm giving you some simple tricks that will aid your ability to handle these. And they're going to be busy pushing you their usual stuff which will be covered by their insurance, but it'll be killing people, and Dr. Fuster is helping develop these new things. I advocate you stay on the IV chelation. When you're getting in trouble, Dr. Bob gives you the IV peroxide, and you stay every day on the oral chelation. And that pretty much is the message, and I want to thank you all very much for coming, and it's been a pleasure to have you here tonight. <laughs>